Okay, so this is uh, video notes for proofs day two. All the proofs that you did the other night were side, 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 angle, side, or angle, angle, side. You should not have had any HL or angle, side, angle. I kind of divide them. So all your proofs tonight will be HL or angle, side, angle. Okay? And so I'm going to do one HL proof, I'm going to do one angle, side, angle, and I'm going to give you a practice HL proof to do. All right? So here is our first proof. All right, so pause the video, write all this information down, and then we'll go from there. All right, so <clears throat> now that you've got the information written down, let's go mark the information into the picture. So EA is perpendicular to AB, so that creates a right angle here. And uh, DC is perpendicular to CB. That creates a right angle here. And so we have EB bisects AC. So I'm going to do that in a different color. So EB bisects EC. So that means B is the midpoint of AC. So that means this piece is congruent to this piece. And then we were given one more piece that EB is congruent to DB. Okay, so if I look at all this information, I have everything I need here to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Now, if you attack this problem the wrong way, you're going to get a bad answer, okay? Because this is an HL proof. If I was to try to do it with the other stuff from the other night, I would try to get, and this would be an angle side side. And remember, we said there are no donkeys in geometry. So what's the difference between an angle side side and HL proof? The right angles. Yes, right angles are congruent, but those right angles make right triangles, which make that blue side become a hypotenuse and that green side become a leg. So my first step is that right at uh, EA and uh, perpendicular to AB creates a right angle, angle A. All right, and so that's my first step there. All right. So here we have this. This was given. And so this is definition of a right or actually not of a right, but of perpendicular lines. Okay? Definition of perpendicular lines. And so I have to stop there. And so I can go over here and do it again. Here I have another right angle. Okay? And this is also given here. And this is definition of perpendicular lines. Okay? So, if the A is a right angle and C is a right angle, I could allow you to do this in two steps, but I will do it in one. And that is I can say that triangles EBA and triangles DBC are right triangles. And how can I say that? Well, if a triangle has a right angle in it, doesn't that make it a right triangle? So this is the definition of a right triangle triangle. When you're doing HL proof, that's the third, that's one of those things that you have to do are the three things. Okay? And so we also know the processes. Uh, if you have a bisector, remember that a bisector creates a midpoint. And then a midpoint creates two congruent segments. And so we have all this information here that we have to do in that particular order. So let's get all that in there. This is given definition of a segment bisector. And this is definition of a midpoint. This over here is given. Okay, and so I have my right triangle, my AB is my leg, this EB and DB are my hypotenuse, and so then they all come together Remember, three things. That's why these are shortcuts, not six things anymore. It's only three. And so then I have my two triangles congruent. And my reason for this would be my hypotenuse leg. So whenever you're doing a hypotenuse leg, this is important. you got to say the right triangles. If you don't say there's right triangles, you don't have a hypotenuse leg. And so then we have a, a leg and a hypotenuse. Okay? Three things have to come together to prove triangles congruent every time. Okay, so here we have another proof. Pause the video, write down this proof, and then mark all the given information and see if we can figure out what makes this proof true. All 
All right, so if we mark this information, we got angle A1 is congruent to angle 2. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. That's all my given information. I look to see that they can both share a side, and so since they share a side, I can mark this congruent. I'm going to change this to blue. And I'm going to change the other one to green. So this is the side they share in common, and so that is a side. This is an angle. This is an angle. We have another angle and another angle here. Okay, so these two triangles are going to be congruent by angle, side, angle. And it's angle, side, angle, and not angle, angle, side, because that side is created by the two angles for each figure. Okay? And so we have given information. I'm going to put all these arrows in here. I kind of already know where my proof is going. So there's my first given. This is my second given. This is my reflexive property. Now make sure you do this one right because the order is reversed. Because the triangles are flipped over on each other. If you don't pay attention to that, that's that detail that'll get you. And so there's my two angles and my side. And since I have all that information, I can say that my triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. And there's that proof. All right, we got one more to go. So here's a HL proof. You want to pause and try this one on your own. That'd be great. And then turn video back on when you're ready for me to go through it. Okay, so let's put this information picture. AE is perpendicular to EC. So I get a right angle here. Oops, that was not a right angle. All right, so I got a right angle here. Uh, BC is perpendicular to EC also. So this is a right angle. We have D is the midpoint of EC. So I mean this piece. I'm going to change my colors here. This piece is congruent to this piece. And we have AD is congruent to BC. So I got this one is congruent to this one. All right. Well, this is my hypotenuse. This is my leg. And so I'm going to have an HL proof. Okay. And so if we run through our processes here, we first have that uh, we have perpendicular here. And perpendicular lines form right angles. So this is my first right angle here. Okay. That given ends there because I can't go any farther with that one. So then my next given, again, we have perpendicular lines. And what are perpendicular lines? They form right angles. And remember, if I have two right angles, since this is an HL proof, the only way I can do this one is to bring these together and say that I have right triangles. Okay. And so there's my right triangles. And that process ends there. That's the first of three, three parts. And I go to my next given, which is right here. So, remember that if I have a midpoint, then it creates two congruent segments. And then I have another given right over here. Remember the givens come from the top. Okay. And so there's my hypotenuse in here, my legs in here, and so all three of these come together. To say that my triangle is congruent by HL. So let's get the reasons in here. I know I was saying the reasons as we were going, so let's get back in here. Given, 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 given. This was given a lot of information. This is definition of perpendicular lines. Definition of perpendicular lines. This is definition of a right triangles. I was given this is definition of a midpoint. That was given, HL, all the reasons are in there. All right, that was our last proof there. 
Uh, so you're going to have about 10 proofs to do tonight using these two theorems, and so good luck on those. And then we have our next set of proofs, which will be our CPCTC proofs coming up.